Game two of our Saturday doubleheader here at Doug Kingsmore Stadium. The Florida State Seminoles and the Clemson Tigers after the Tigers took game one 15 to five in a game short to six and two thirds due to the ACC run rule. Hi everybody. Welcome back in with Ron Smith Pete Yannity. Tale of two cities in game number one. Grand slam in the opening inning by Jaime Ferrer put Florida State on top four zip. From there though it's pretty much all Tigers. Well, Ethan Darden came back after giving up the big home run in the first inning and pitched excellent baseball from then on. And uh, there you see the big home run from Ferrar. And, but uh, Darden came back and pitched, gave up no more runs after that. And in fact, Florida State only got three more hits. And then Clemson just, just pounded the ball 15, 14 hits and 15 runs. Tigers with. A long ball in the second from Ken Canarella that tied it at four at the time. Alex Lodi's the shortstop, cut the Clemson lead to 6-5 in the fifth. Tigers respond in the bottom of the fifth with a five spot. First, Jacob Hinderleiter hitting his fifth home run of the year. And then Blake Wright, number 11, an absolute rocket. You were amazed at how that even stayed fair. Yeah, really a great job. And then finished thing, things off there in the seventh inning. And again, the Tigers just swung the bat very, very well. Blake Clean baseball with the exception of the one error in the first inning. Only had one walk, Pete. Will Taylor delivering the game-winning hit. He had a good first game. A couple of hits for the Tigers left fielders. Clemson with the victory. It's 20th of the season, handing Florida State its first loss. So here come the Seminoles in the first. William Smith Tibbs, Ferrer, Ferro, Dingus, can to at first. Bottom of the lineup. Looking a little bit different than game one. Lodis, the shortstop, moves into the eight hole. He hit ninth in the first game. And Jackson West, the catcher, getting the start. Austin Gordon, who has been the Friday starter for Clemson, getting the call in game two on a Saturday after Darden did such a nice job on the hill after the early struggles. And one and one the count to Max Williams, the center fielder. Noted early on that Yamas Ross, their regular center fielder, has been out with an injury, so Williams getting an opportunity. Transfer from Alabama. One for three with a run scored. Had an infield hit in the first inning of game number one. One two pitch. Well, Gordon, a bit of a different approach than we saw in the first game with Darden. Darden with that sinker ball, he's going to keep it down, 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 and you'll see. Gordon climbed the ladder with that 93 94 mile an hour fastball. Took a loss last week against Duke, but off to a good start here. An opening strikeout of Williams, and we're underway in game number two. Played last year not far away at Tallahassee Community College. 1 1 pitch. Sky to center. Room for Canarella. Look at that ball carry. A little bit of wind out there. Yep. And it's out number three. Seminoles leave the bases loaded in the top half of the first. And the Clemson Tigers going for a Saturday sweep are coming up. He's set to lead things off in the first. Nolan Oraki, who returned to action in game one after a couple of weeks away. The DH bat second. Blake Wright sizzling at the plate, followed by Alden Mathis, who moves into the cleanup spot. Over top the catcher, Taylor, Hinderleiter, Chufo, and Purify round out the Tigers lineup. For Eric Backage, they're going to face one of the very best in the oh. nation. The ERA leader, 0.33 for Jamie Arnold. What a left-hander he is. Well, his, his statistics are just out of this world. You mentioned the ERA. He's 5-0. and uh, Pitched 27 innings, only given up 18 hits. But what's really remarkable, 44 strikeouts and only five walks. He pounds the strike zone with extra special stuff. You know, fastball that that is up here in the 90s and, and good break and pitch. I mean, he's just a complete pitcher. This is ripped into right field. Mathis, it'll get down in front of Tibbs. They'll wave Canarella. He'll come across with a first run of the game. Daniel Cantu, first baseman, leads things off. Oh, boy. Skies it to right, yep. and it's well hit. Mathis looks up. It sails way out of here. We're tied just like that at one apiece. Cantu, the towering home run, his first of the season. And I'm telling you, one of the things that Gordon's going to have to be careful of, I mean, he's got, if he's going to pitch up in the strike zone, he's got to be up. Already has a couple of strikeouts. In the air center. 
Canarella back on it. Terrace reaching, and he got it. Might have been on its way out. Nifty play by the Tigers center fielder. Frustration for his counterpart from Florida State. Cam Canarella was only DHing for a while. Tigers love having him back in center. Took away a homer from Williams. miss third strikeout so far for Arnold Tigers go in order here in the second a 1-1 game on the top hitters in the nation as the weekend began sophomore third baseman hitting 476 and he rips one high and deep to left Taylor back reaches and it's gone Cam Smith, Tigers able to contain him somewhat in the opening game. He did score a run, but he was 0 for 2. Now a single and a home run here in the nightcap. That is home run number seven on the year for Smith. Yeah, just yeah. a little bit odd. Yeah. And, you know, again, he's kind of got an opportunity to start. That's hit well to right field. Mathis, Terrace, Wall, and gone. Seminoles take a 3-1 lead all on solo homers. Ferrer, his second bomb of the afternoon. One, two, coming to the center fielder for the Seminoles. And that's hit high and deep to right. Let's just say Williams just got his revenge. A two-run blast, a no-doubter, and it's 5-1. to one. And, you know, you get the 10-run the, the rule. In the first game, as you see, right, chasing a high fastball. Second time he's gotten him to go down. Looking and now swinging in a six strikeout. Yeah, the ball's up and out of the strike zone. You're just not going to hit that. But, uh, you know, you'd like to save some of those runs. Tibbs coming down the line. Sky to right, back on it. And looking up is Mathis, and it's gone. There's your insurance they were looking for, a towering home run. Fifth of the season for Marco Dingus, the DH. And the lead is now 8-1. to one. Chufo, the shortstop, waits on deck. That's Hit well, high man. and deep to left center field. Williams will watch it sail out of here. Second home run of the doubleheader for Hinderleiter, give him six on the season. And it's an eight to four game. Clemson, you sure would like to get right up again in this ball game. I told that, you he had 25 home runs in four years at Davidson. Yeah. Already six now this season for Clemson. Skied to left, Jordan Williams, who came on as a pinch runner, backs up shy of the terrace, has trouble, and it's gonna drop. Into second goes Gerald. 3-0 pitch. Gerald takes his lead at second. Four-pitch walk. A couple of pitchers doing that for Canarella. 3-2 pitch. Line to center field. That's a base hit. Gerald had to hesitate. He'll hold it third. The bases are loaded. And what do you know? Here comes Blake Wright. Line shot three-run homer in a five-run fifth inning of game number one. Bags are full, eight to four, Seminoles, first pitch swinging, center field, Williams back at the terrace at the wall, and it's gone! A game-tying grand slam for Blake Wright here in the bottom of the ninth. Unbelievable! Well, we talked about this ballpark. Playing small right now. It's a fastball over the middle part of the plate, and Blake Wright with that that power swinging that hot bat inside out at it, drove it out right where the wind is blowing out, and it carried out of here. They also talked about early, you know, to start this inning, you had a hit by pitch, and then you had a walk, then the home run, then an out, then a double. There you see the inside out. Swing by Blake Wright. He's got enough power to take it out of here. Tie this ball game. What an exciting time for these 
Clemson Tigers. They these guys just won't die. That's the third home run allowed by Dorsey. But he's been as good as any reliever in the ACC. How about Blake Wright just hand him the National Player of the Week award. No kidding. Still only one out Pete. Still only one out Pete. Throw to first. Ooh, boy. That was close. That looked like they had him. And yes the call is out and it looked like on the video yeah. replay that there was the tag on the elbow just before the fingertips. Seven across here in the ninth to tie this game and ball four puts him on first and second with two away. Andrew Leiter began this game at first moved over to third base in the third inning. And it's lined into right field a base hit runner will be waved. Here comes Obertop and the Tigers walk it off for a second time today against Florida State. This one could have Miracle put next to it. <laughs> Look at that enthusiasm. <laughs> well, just a just a devastating loss for, for a Florida State team that came into the day undefeated and you know you, you look at how this inning started the walk the hit by batter the hit batter and just continued but gosh you've got to give Clemson a lot of credit for just hanging in there just battle 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 the two big swings by Hinderleiter and then also the big swing of course by Blake Wright we talked about getting him up there as the tying run and he came through. Unbelievable in the ninth inning. The Tigers played eight runs. Three run homer by Hinderleiter, tying grand slam by Wright, and here's your game winner. Jacob Hinderleiter promptly finding a home, arriving this season for the Clemson Tigers. Overtop coming across with the deciding run. <laughs> and it was Overtop who scored the run that wrapped things up in the Tigers game one victory with the run rule. But look at that. I mean, how much fun is that for these those young men? And what I mean, a crazy, crazy game baseball is, Ron. Yeah. Jacob McGovern came on, freshman, making a rare appearance in his first season. A guy no from Seneca. Yeah, he just did a great job. Uh, yo, we forgot about that. Comes on as the pitcher yeah. in the uh, last couple of innings, and he will get his first career win. Yeah, just they brought him on in the eighth inning just to try to get him out of the game. Have a mop up, yeah. And he's got himself a win. That is pretty amazing. Clemson once came from a double-digit run down late against NC State back when Jack Leggett was guiding the team right. a decade and a half ago. But this will go down as one of the more memorable wins in recent Clemson baseball history. Florida State began the day 19 and 0. They lose back to back games for the first time this season. The Tigers improved to 21 and 2, 4 and 1 in the ACC. Seminoles dropped to 3 and 2 in the conference. What a ninth inning it was. And Blake Wright, once again, one of the heroes. He came to the plate with the bases loaded, one out, his team down by four in the ninth. He'd hit a three run homer in game number one. Why not go for one more when his team needed it most in the bottom of the ninth? That tied it. And the Tigers eventually get the winning hit as Hinderleiter scores over top for the victory. Uh, this is what makes baseball the, the, the greatest game there is. There's, you, you know, it's never over. There's no, there's not a time limit. You've got to get 27 outs. And you mentioned uh, Jacob McGovern. What a job he did to pick up his first collegiate win. Tigers go to 4 and 0 on the season in one run games. That's always a very important stat. Clemson Tigers victorious in both ends of the doubleheader in truly different ways as Mustache March continues for the Tigers with a thrilling doubleheader sweep. Back with us tomorrow at 1 p.m. We'll see you then for Ron Smith and the great crew, Pete Kennedy. This has been a presentation of ESPN.